Hi everyone and welcome to Teach Tech Play. This is episode 7 and I'm Eleni Karitsis, your co-host. Now tonight we have a wonderful show. Now we did have five presenters uh, presenting from around the world but unfortunately due to some technical difficulties a couple won't be able to make it and my co-host for tonight Molly will explain that in a second. But before we get to Molly, I just would like to say a huge congratulations to her on being voted our Play Queen for Episode 6 in December. So well done, Molly, and thank you so much for joining us tonight in co-hosting the show with me. So I might swing over to you to introduce our wonderful presenters for tonight. Great. Thanks. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Molly Schrader, and I um, am the director of Summits with the EdTech team, and uh, the one we have been um, doing a lot of fun Google Apps for Education summits lately. Um, just launched some iOS summits, and um, next month are starting our next initiative with Future Ready School Summit. So um, it's fun to be here. And um, Eleni asked me a little while ago. Um, she said sometimes it's hard to get some girls to come and present. Um, or women to come and present on Teach Tech Play. So I said, well, I've got a great crew um, of friends from over here, and I know that uh, we may be able to get up early <laughs> in the, or in the middle of the night and uh, come and do some presenting. So um, we're sorry that Jenny McGuire, she was uh, in Vancouver this weekend for our iOS summit, and her flight ended up getting canceled, so she's on an overnight flight right now um, back to Chicago. And then also um, Holly Clark, who was also up at that same event, um, is still up there, and her hotel Wi-Fi is not working out so well. So uh, we're sorry to miss both of those ladies. But um, we have got a great crew um, here, um, some really fantastic women that have helped um, really make a lot of our Google Apps for Education events um, fantastic. And uh, first we have Kate Petty, and she's out in Orange County, California. Uh, Michelle Armstrong, who is in Calgary, Canada, and um, Heather, who is um, a good friend of ours from Singapore American School that also lives over here. Uh, I don't even know if you would consider yourself living over here anymore, but uh, comes back to the States for the summer um, to, to the Chicago, Illinois area. So excited to have those ladies with us. Beautiful. Thank you, Molly. Now, ladies, do you have anything else to add about who you are? Well, Molly summed it up quite well, but did you want to well, say... Well, I didn't really say what you girls did, so maybe you can explain some of Exactly what you do. So, Michelle, did you want to kick us off and tell us a little bit more about yourself? Sure, you bet. So I'm from Calgary, Alberta, here in Canada, where, yes, it is pretty chilly. We've got a fair bit of snow. Um, but my day job, I work for a wonderful private school here in Calgary. I'm the technology integration specialist uh, by day, and then by night, um, I get to work with a tech team and, and help them with a lot of their Google App summits. And so recently, I was just down in Las Vegas, so very lucky to be at that summit. And then we've got a number of Canadian summits coming up. In uh, We've got the Alberta summit at the beginning of March, and then Ontario summit in um, April. So pretty busy with that as well. So And super happy to be here, so thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you for joining us, Michelle. Kate, would you like to tell us a little bit more about yourself? Oh, I'd love to. So I'm in Southern California. I work at the district office for one of the uh, school districts, Saddleback Valley Unified School District. Um, and that is my day job. And like Michelle, I, I, I uh, work for um, a tech team doing some summits. And I uh, have to say that that's what invigorates and energizes everything I do um, in education. And so if you like what you hear tonight, uh, you can come and catch me if you'll be at the Roseville Summit this weekend, and I'll also be in Alberta. Um, I guess it's just next month, um, and you can catch me and we can have a quick chat. Beautiful. Thank you, Kate. It sounds like you guys are quite busy in the upcoming month with a lot of summits. So, Heather, will, uh, if you would like to introduce a little bit more about yourself. Sure. I'm an ed tech coach at Singapore American School. I work with middle school students and teachers. And like the other ladies, I also moonlight with the EdTech team. Um, so this last fall, I was in Jakarta and Kuala Lumpur and one other place that I can't think of right now. Oh, in India, Mumbai. Um, and it's been great because I get to kind of share my latest obsession, which is in graphic design. So I've been doing lots of graphic design techniques with Google and products. Um, so that's been really fun. Um, and I'm really sad that I'm going to miss the Canberra Summit. Is it a Google Summit, Molly? Yeah. 
Um, there's a Google Summit in Canberra. It's March 28, 29, and unfortunately I can't make it because it's our spring break and I have other plans, so I'm bummed about that. But thanks for having me. That is a shame that you won't be in Canberra because I know a lot of people from Australia will be watching tonight but I know that there are quite a few summits coming up this year and hopefully we will get to see a few of you. And I have spoken to Holly and obviously Jenny's still on a flight but Holly is going to join us for an episode um, in a couple of months so we've been able to fit her into a later date which is always good. But just a reminder for everyone, if you we've just gone through a website transformation so over the, our summer break here in Australia I did some changes to the website so it should be a lot easier to find information on our presenters and what they have presented so make sure you check that out if you have missed a show and would like to catch up they are all available on our website as well or you can simply search these in YouTube and please don't forget to vote our voting last month was um, for our December episode was I think five votes Molly so it was quite close and so please make sure you vote and I'll just share the slide to vote tonight I've lost it of course there it is so make sure you vote uh, voting opens there it is so voting is open and you can find this on our website as well so the link is case sensitive, so it's bit.ly forward slash capital TTP lowercase e7 vote. So make sure you take note of that, and I'll also be showing this at the end of the show. But enough of that, I think we should get started. So up first, we have got Kate, and Kate is going to be presenting on close reading on the internet tools and sites for every day so I'm quite interested by your title to know what this exactly means Kate so when you're ready let me know when to start the timer and um, we can start the show alright let me just get the screen share going and go ahead so are you ready yep ready are you yep all right, so I am really excited to share uh, a tool that actually an uh, Apple Distinguished Educator, Kristen Thompson, um, she's amazing, and she and I, that I work with it every day, and I get to hang out with her, um, is really excited about, and it's called Scribal. And so what I'm doing right now is I am just at Tween Tribune, which is kind of a popular American um, nonfiction reading website that we're at, and I, I chose an article called Ballooning Across the Ocean Like Camping in the Sky. And so if I want to annotate this for my class, all I have to do is click my Chrome extension, and I'll show you the other ways you can get this um, extension in different browsers. Um, and it's a little guy up there. It always shows up at the bottom, um, but I'm going to move it up to the top. Now, I'm not sure if you can, if you can see the pop-up. Can you see the pop-up? Maybe? No? Yes, we can. We can. Okay. Yeah, Perfect. the toolbar? Yep. Yeah, I didn't even think about that when I was when I was thinking about this. Okay. Yay. So that's the Scribal toolbar. And so I'm logged in. I'm logged in with my Google account. So it's just a one button login. Here's my library. I have highlighting, post-it notes, texts, and all sorts of things. And one of the things about this article is how it's different from actually camping. They talk about ballooning across the Pacific Ocean, um, like being in a in a tent. And so one of the things I think I would ask my students is what's the difference between camping and camping in a balloon? And one of the things is that they wear oxygen masks when they're doing this in a balloon. So we could highlight that. Um, and then another thing that they do is they actually have a toilet inside the balloon. We don't have those normally in tents. I could even maybe just make that an orange text. So it's really kind of cool that you can do this. And then you can add a post-it note wherever you'd like. Uh, I'm going to go with an onboard heater. And I'm going to say something like... Um, Sometimes we have this. And um, so what I'll have to do is click Save up here. And once I save it, it's going to save it into my library. And I'll show you my library in just a second, as soon as it, it saves it all up for me. Um, and if I refresh here, I'll find that my article is shown up, as has my um, annotations that I've created. Now, the best thing about Scribal not only is for the annotations for any website you're on, but I can share this article, editable article, with, with a, co a colleague or friends or I'm thinking students with groups, and they can actually work collaboratively 
on this article together. Um, as a teacher, I can start the thing, um, the article, and then in the post-it note, create directions for the students and share that link out to all of my students, all 30 or 40 of them, um, and then they can start working uh, on the instructions that I've given them. So it's really kind of a, it's really a cool tool. Um, I just wanted to show you that it does uh, come with Chrome, Firefox, and Safari, and notice that I totally highlighted this with Scribble. And then down below, it also says um, that it is... One minute. A, thank you. That it, it is available on iPad, and this is why Kristen likes it so much, that you can use your iPad booklet mark, book, bookmarklet toolbar. The last thing I wanted to show you was this amazing uh, HyperDoc that Lisa Highfill here in California uses um, and I've shared with all of my teachers, and it's this close reading where it's a you do, we do, you do. Um, and you could do it in this document, but now that you have Scribble, you could always ask your students to do the you do digital retelling with posting the main ideas in Scribble, um, and then doing text evidence with your students together, and then in the third one, asking them to do the you do again, all in the same article where you can actually see everything that's happening, they can annotate, um, and then they turn that into you and you grade that instead of the Google Doc, which I totally love. And so that's Scribble and close reading tools on the internet. And I'm very excited about it. Ooh, perfect timing. You like that? I'm awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe how perfect you got that timing. So thank you for sharing that. I must say, um, Scribble is something I haven't heard of, and I think there's going to be a few things tonight that I haven't heard of, which is always exciting, seeing new and exciting things I can take back into my classroom. So thank you for that. Did any of our presenters have any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Is there a cost to it? It's all free. All of it's free. So wow. far. <laughs> so far, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The good answer, right? <laughs> For now. <laughs> For now. Wonderful. Thank you. Now, I might, Molly, if you'd like to introduce our next presenter for us. I would. Um, so next we have Michelle Armstrong, and Michelle uh, does this great uh, tool that she's going to be sharing at a lot of our summits, too, um, in three minutes or less with Flippity. So uh, I think four minutes we're going to have a nice relaxed time to, to hear a little bit about Flippity. So, Michelle. Great. Thanks, Molly. Okay, I'm going to just share my screen. Let me know when you'd like me to start timing. Sounds good. There you go. You should see just my Google screen. Let's just make sure I'm on the right one. Yeah, I am. Yeah, Great. We see it. Okay, so go ahead and start the time. Off you go. So what I'm going to talk about is flippity.net, and to find flippity.net, all we have to do is Google flippity.net. So what Flippity is, this is an amazing um, tool created by a guy called Steve Fortna, where initially uh, it was just digital flashcards, um, but what he's now added over here, you'll see he now has a Jeopardy type quiz show. But the first thing I'm going to show you is just these digital flashcards. Now granted, we're you know trying to move away from the rote memorization, but we still live in this world where flashcards um, are still a beneficial tool, and it's kind of cool that we can now create them digitally. Um, what Steve does with his Flippity site is he gives us step-by-step -step instructions on how to create these, and he even gives us a template uh, that we can use. So basically, when you click on that template, it asks you to make a copy. What you have on each side, uh, you've got a side one and a side two. You can change all of these items. Uh, whatever you put on side one will be side one of your flashcard, side two, you get the idea. And then you can also customize the text color and the card color. I'm just going to show you how we can modify this. So let's say uh, the greatest ed tech show. <laughs> and of course, the answer we know is teach tech play. Um, but what I can do is I can take an image as well. So instead of just having text-based flashcards, I can now have an image. So what I'm doing here is just taking the URL of the image, and I'm going to paste that in here. Uh, and then we'll go over and take a look at what our flashcards look like. But do notice as well as images, you can add YouTube links, you can add uh, HTML um, coding if you want to get super geeky. Um, but let's just see what those looks like, look like as our digital flashcards. So to make them into flashcards, the key is publishing the spreadsheet. So we go down to Publish to the Web. And when we publish this, it's going to say, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Um, 
And now I take that published link. So all I did there is I just uh, command C to copy that. So I've copied that link. And then I have a tab at the bottom where I just paste in my link. And as soon as I paste in my link, I now have a link to my online flashcard. So we go over here and we'll see, oh, the greatest ed tech show is, yay, teach tech way. Uh, <laughs> and you can go through and you've got all of the rest of your flashcards. Now another great thing as a teacher, we can, instead of flipping through each of our students' flashcards to check for understanding, we have this tab here where we can just list um, side one and side two of those flashcards as well. We've got the option to print a quiz if we want to fill in the blank or a matching quiz. We can take all of those terms that they've created in their Flippity uh, and turn that into a quiz. So those are Flippity's flashcards. Now I'm going to take you back because I have four minutes instead of my usual three. <laughs> and you're and down to your last minute. That's all I need. And so I'm going to take a look at what's fairly new is the quiz show, which is the same idea. We have a template that we can modify. And I have that template over here. Again, it's just a Google Sheet. It's set up with all of your questions for your quiz show. Again, I've just added question one, greatest ed tech show. I've added the link for an image. In this case, images are a bit trickier. You'll see that you have to have a little bit of coding in there to get images to go in. But the same rules apply. I publish this to the web. I get my link. I paste my link over on the second tab, which I've already done, but then click on my quiz show, and we have this great quiz show, Grace that Tech Show, we answer this, gives us some images, but then you can track if team two got that right, team three got that right, great, go to the next question, pick this one, here's the answer, oh, team three got that one right, team two got that one right, um, and then you'll notice what's happening is the scores are being um, calculated on the left as you play your game, that's Flippity. Yay, awesome, Michelle. Yeah. <clears throat> I love the new Jeopardy part of that. That's really I know. cool. Yeah, it's great. It really and is. And how easy for the kids to collaboratively build that spreadsheet together and then be able to do the quizzes and kind of use that as a class study tool. That's awesome. Yeah, no, love it for sure. I'm going to make, yeah, can I make one more note about this just on Flippity? Um, yeah. I did notice, and it was actually just this morning, that he's got a new Flippity certificate quiz which I just took a quick peek at, um, but my uh, I hesitate a little bit on that. There's a big ad at the top for downloading something, um, so I just want to warn users, when you take a look at the certificate of completion, beware of that download button that comes <laughs> up at the top. I was a little disappointed about that, but other than that, Flippity is amazing. And what would they do with the certificate? Is that just like that they completed the quiz, then they get that, or is it a whole other option? You know, I couldn't really tell. Um, I think you have to go through and you have to get all of the answers right. Once you get them all right, you get this certificate. But it seemed like there was a banner ad at the top that um, okay. that was a bit misleading. So I just wanted to, yeah, today was the first I saw this. Um, okay. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> Did anyone else have any questions for Michelle? Nope. Okay, so next up is Lenny. I was going to say, let me introduce you. Um, next up we have Lenny, and she is uh, just decided to come in at the last minute since we don't have Jenny and Holly here. Um, and so she is going to um, give us a four-minute presentation on, and then do you want me to do the timer here too, Lenny? Uh, I can do it if you want. Okay, you got it? Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, and she's going to share a little bit about Storybird, which is something that we use um, with my elementary students a lot. So take it away, Lenny. Okay, now I am pre-warning. I decided to do this probably 30 minutes ago, so bear with me while I just get set up. Okay, so Storybird is something I came across about a year ago, and it's a great tool to promote students in creative writing. So as a teacher, what you need to do is sign up for a teacher account. And once you sign up, you get to invite your students. Now, you can also invite existing accounts. So if you've had previous accounts within your school, you can invite and transfer students over. But the great thing with this is you have options. So when you go into Storybird, you can write stories. And what it provides you with is different clip art artworks. So if I was a student, I can scroll through hundreds of images 
but I might select this image and here I can see once I go into it, it gives me a whole range of images I can use. And it's quite easy, all I do is say use this art and it gives me three options. I can create a long book, a long form book which is multiple chapters, a picture book or a poem. As I teach primary year students, so students age 5 to 12, generally this consists of picture books. So when I select picture books, it creates a story. So in here I can create a cover and then I can simply write my story. So I'm going to be really creative. So once upon a time, blah, blah, blah. And then I can add another page. And as I add pages, I have the selection of all the artwork on either side to use within this drawing. Now I have the option when inserting my images where I would like to write and where I would not like to write. So I can move it over and so I can write my text here. This is a great way for students to share creative writing and for those students who struggle to write and the pictures give them that prompt to move on and try something different. Now once I save my work I can actually publish this and being a student we sometimes don't want to share our work with the world now it's not working. So here when I, I oh, this is a new option that I hadn't seen before. You can also invite a collaborator and you can publish your work. So when I hit publish, it says, oh, I need a title first. I apologize. It's now not working. This is what happens when you, oh, here we go. So here's my title, story. And save it. So once I've saved that, I actually have the option, I'm just weary of time, I can save it and share it with my teachers. Now as a teacher, you also have the option within here to set out assignments for your students and then they can submit it and they receive a notification. The other great thing with Storybird is it, you can read other stories. So you have the option of stories, poems or blog, the blog of Storybird and here you can select a range of different categories. So I love picture books and I love looking for books about friends and as I teach 12 year olds I'm going to look in the tween section and here it gives me a whole list of stories that I can read um, about friends. So it's a great way to improve students in reading short books and also develop their creativity. Now when you go up here you can see your bookshelf and you can see a range of different things. Another way I've used Storybird is I've used the pictures as picture prompts and printed those and students have used them for creative writing or snapshot writing within the classroom. And I think I've got a little bit of time left but I might leave it there if anyone else, I know Molly you said you've used Storybird and it's a great little tool for sharing student writing and creativity. So if you've got any other ways that you guys who have used it as well would like to share. I just know students absolutely love it and um, especially for older students to share stories with prep buddies and those younger students is a great platform where they can build stories together. Awesome job, yeah. We use it um, a lot with our, our very primary writers um, and so we'll do a collaborative book as a class and so um, the, the kids get a kick out of each person sort of choosing a different picture and they'll read the, the text before and then add to it. But, you know, with our emerging readers and writers, um, you know, just a sentence is great for them to look at the, look at the, te the picture and then sort of comprehend and kind of get creative with some of the, uh, what they think is going on. So we've loved that. It's been really fun. Yeah, and I always love it when the new artwork comes out. The, just by looking at each picture, you can use it in your classroom to prompt others in writing stories and it amazes me by showing one simple picture where I've got an idea and every single student in the class can think of a hundred different stories to go with that one picture so it's really good at sharing and building that creative writing amongst the whole class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great tool. Anyone now, else there, have any questions? Is, yeah, is there a mobile app for creating storybirds? To tell you the honest truth, I've only used the um, web version, so I'm not 100% sure, but I will do some checking once um, Heather starts presenting, and I'll have that answer for you very shortly. <laughs> did, you say whether, did you say whether or not you can publish like actual hard books um, once they're done with the storyboard? Um, you 
can publish them on the Storybird website, but you can't publish it in a hard form. You could screenshot it, I guess, and then print it that way, but um, no, generally just publishes it to their gallery. And as a teacher, you can suggest whether or not you want your students to be able to publish it to that gallery, so you mm -hmm. can lock it down or open it up depending on your own school sort of guidelines. Okay, so next up we have got Heather and Heather is going to present on Canva. Now Canva is something I use a little bit of, especially with Teach Tech Play, just organising each of our um, monthly creative art um, displays to promote each episode. So I'd love to see and learn some tips and tricks from what you know of Canva because what I know is quite basic. So I'm quite looking forward to your presentation, Heather. So let me know when you're ready and I'll start the timer. Okay, thanks. Uh, they just tried to, tried to come in and vacuum around me. I guess that's a sign that I shouldn't be at work anymore. <laughs> Uh, all right, I want to share Canva. Competition is stiff here. All of these tools I haven't heard of except one, and that one I had forgotten about. So I'm going to wow everybody with Canva. Um, raise your hand if you've ever had to design a poster or a flyer or something like that as a teacher and you're not a professional designer. And I'm going to use my Romper Room Magic Mirror so I can see everybody at home and I can see that Jay and Anna are raising their hands along with Molly and Michelle. <laughs> Um, okay, you can start the timer. Sorry. That's all right. I got an extra 20 seconds. Um, so I'm going to try to design a poster in four minutes. So let's see. Can you see my screen? We good? Yes. Okay. Yep, we're good. So this is Canva. Um, you have to be 13 or over to use it. So you can use it with students if they're over 13 or if they're 13 and up. Um, I use it mostly as a teacher, and um, you can design, they have all of these setups ready-made, like if you want to design an Instagram, or what I really like is like your Facebook cover. Um, so today I'm going to choose poster, and that takes you in to an untitled design. Um, and then over here on the left, they have all of these really beautiful layouts that you can use, and um, they're gorgeous. They're designed by designers. And you'll notice that many of them say free, but some of them don't. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose one that doesn't say free, because I'm going to show you how you can make it free. Um, so pull it over here, and so here it is. Really why they say it's not free is these photos um, are their stock photos. But you can delete these, and you can add your own photos in. And so I've got my own photos that I've dragged in here. Um, so I'm going to drag that in, and you can re size it around, um, and then you can just take all of this text and make it your own. Um, so let's see if I can do this. The Creative Mentors is a club that we have here at SAS where students um, gather and basically whatever they're interested in learning about to create, they do. So we've got some movie filmmakers, we've got some photographers, we've got some game designers. Um, and so let's say I'm going to make a poster to kind of get more students in. So you see that I'm just using everything that's here, but I can also make my own delete things. Um, and I don't have to lay it out myself and look for fonts that make sense. And so I am not a professional designer, but in the end this is going to be a beautifully designed poster. Um, so I'll get rid of this photo as well. I'm going to drag another one in. Oops. You can move things around. So there, here's my beautiful poster. When you're finished, and I think that looks pretty good. Um, over here on the left, you can also start from scratch, and you can just bring in different elements. So here's all these different cool little, I don't know what you would call these, little text elements um, that are really nice. And there's also a lot of stock photos. Most of them only cost a dollar. So if you did need a stock photo, I think a dollar is pretty reasonable. You can get different backgrounds. One minute. Um, and when you're finished, you can go up here to share. So you can share it to social media, or you can click download. Um, and you can download it as a high-quality PDF that you can print, and it prints very well. Um, 
And because I got rid of the paid photos, it's not it's free now. So even though it said that it wasn't free, it is since I took the photos out and used my own. Um, so there you have that. Um, what else do I want to say? Um, the other thing that Canva recently added is this design. Well, maybe it's not recent, but they have a whole design school that has these wonderful tutorials. If you do want to become a pro graphic designer, um, it's all of these great tutorials. And as I was preparing for this, I found out that they have an iPad app, which I can't wait to check out. And so that is my Teach Tech Place link. Beautiful, and you have seven seconds to spare. Awesome job. That's cool. Um, Heather, have you used that to design any logos or anything? Because I know that that's another way that some people are using Canva, is that um, they can design logos. And maybe, Eleni, that's what you did with the, the Teach Tech Play one. But I know that there's some fun um, little graphics that you can use as well um, to kind of create your a new logo. Yeah, and I haven't used it for that. Um, but I saw that they do have little little shapes in there. Yeah. Yeah, they have a whole range of things. I didn't actually design the Teach Tech Play logo through there. I have a friend who does it for a job, so lucky enough she helped me out. But with every month, any posters I use, um, Canva, it's just the designs it has is just fantastic. And for a dollar, it's no cost really at all. And yeah, it's really easy to use. I recommend a lot of people to jump on to Canva as it's a great tool to use if you are a teacher or a student. So, yeah, it's great. I now that's yeah, off you go, Heather. And I also just really love um, the layouts as inspiration. So even if you were learning or using a different tool, sometimes I go into Canva just to look through and get ideas because I think they're really well done. Yeah, and I know some of, um, I've got some ideas from that and then use Google Drawing and try to create my own things. So there's always other ways you can create, but it's good at inspiration from Canva. I know I've used it many times. So we've actually come to the end of our show and I'd like to thank our presenters so much for getting up at so early in the morning. Um, we appreciate you being able to come on. I know it's always difficult. Us down under in Australia, it's, our times are very different to America. So we do appreciate you coming on and hopefully we get to, some of our viewers get to see you soon at a range of different summits as I know there are quite a few. And just a reminder, I'll just share the link again to vote. Now voting opens well, it's open from now and it closes Friday night at 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So just keep that in mind if you are in America, that it closes at your early, early morning. So keep that in the back of your heads and make sure you vote for your favourite presenter for our Play Queen because we won't have a king this um, episode. <laughs> and next month's episode will be aired on Monday the 2nd of March at 8 p.m., the same time as normal, and we look forward to having everyone there. And make sure if you've got any questions, just send us an email via our Contact Us form on our website. We'd love to hear from you and know what you think of the show. So do any of our presenters have something they'd like to um, share before we end our show? Um, I'll just plug our, our next two Australia summits since I know you have a lot of viewers there. Um, so March 28th and 29th will be in Canberra and that website is just about to be launched. Um, and then we also are going to be in Sydney April 16th and 17th. Um, and you can find information about all the events at www.gafesummit.com. Thank you, Molly. And a huge thank you to Molly. You have been fantastic both this episode and last episode. Two in a row getting up early to support our viewers and our show. So we really do appreciate it. And mm -hmm. same to all of you wonderful ladies. And really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. And sorry to all our viewers who are looking forward to seeing Jenny and Holly. We will have them soon, I promise you. We will get them, and I'm pretty sure Molly will make sure that they are also on. But I we probably won't be back to host, though. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I will let you off, you can, Molly. You can get them. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So once again, huge thank you to all our presenters, and it will be announced on Friday who the play queen is for episode seven. So thank you once again, and make sure you vote. See you later, everyone. Bye bye.